Hello, gemstone hunter. What if the gold had never been hidden, but exposed, right there in plain sight, in the colors of the stones people step on without paying the slightest attention? Well, while many believe that gold only appears in deep mines or in stories of past gold mining, the truth is much more provocative. Nature leaves clear, almost obvious clues, but no one has been taught to see them. There are specific stone colors that act as true natural warnings of the presence of gold underground, and most people literally walk over them every day. It's not a lack of intelligence, it's a lack of visual repertoire. The curious thing is that these signs have always been there, silent, waiting for someone attentive enough to connect the dots. In this content, the proposal is simple and powerful. To reveal what these colors are, why they indicate gold, and how to identify if you have already come across one of them without realizing it. No empty promises or fantasies of instant wealth, but practical knowledge, the kind that changes the way you observe the ground. And when that happens, there's no going back. Perception expands. So, before moving on, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because from now on you're going to start seeing value where before you only saw ordinary stones. And this is just the beginning. Imagine someone walking along any dirt road, one of those that cut through the countryside, the desert, or the bank of a nearly dry river, while the sun beats down and the ground seems too ordinary to hide any secrets. Yet, beneath each step, an ancient story is silently told. The earth is not just soil, it is memory compacted into layers, colors, and textures. Long before maps, satellites, or modern detectors, humankind learned to observe the world with almost ritualistic attention. The colors of stones, for example, have always been an ancestral language, a mineral alphabet indicating water, iron, copper, and of course gold. None of this was mystical, it was survival and reading the environment. Those who knew how to observe, found it. Those who didn't, passed by. It's curious to see how, over time, modern haste has made people unlearn how to look down, as if value were only in what shines on screens and in shop windows. However, the earth remains there, speaking in the same way, waiting for someone willing to listen with their eyes. Ancient prospectors didn't have noisy machines or sophisticated technology, but they had something rare today patience and attention to detail. They observed slopes, riverbanks, natural cuts in the terrain, and above all, the variations in color of the exposed rocks. A reddish stone wasn't just beautiful, it could indicate oxidation of minerals associated with gold. A greenish hue, in turn, raised suspicions of specific geological processes. Darker, denser, and heavier rocks, on the other hand, inspired immediate respect. Everything was observed as a whole, never in isolation. It was like reading an open book, page by page, without skipping chapters. And perhaps the most fascinating point is this. This knowledge never disappeared. It was only forgotten, buried by the idea that only specialists can understand the Earth. But, as someone begins to recover this attentive gaze, something changes internally, and the terrain ceases to be just a backdrop and becomes a living conversation, preparing the way for an even more concrete secret that is about to be revealed. The real turning point comes when you understand that gold rarely appears alone, isolated and shining like in the movies. In real life, it likes company. It emerges associated with specific minerals and geological processes that leave visible marks on the landscape, especially in the colors of the rocks. The soil speaks through oxidation, chemical alteration, and the pressure of time. Reddish rocks, for example, often indicate the presence of iron oxides, a classic sign of environments where mineralizing fluids have circulated, and these fluids often carry gold. It's not an absolute rule, but it's a strong indication, one that makes a geologist stop, kneel, and observe calmly. The interesting thing is that these colors don't appear out of nowhere, they are the result of millions of years of silent transformation. When someone understands this, they realize they are not just looking at a stone, but at the trace left by deep processes of the earth. 
The first shock for those learning this is realizing that what seemed like just ugly earth or rusty rock may actually be a natural marker of hidden gold just below. The intense reddish hue, especially when it appears on slopes or natural cuts, usually indicates areas of hydrothermal alteration. Greenish rocks, on the other hand, may be associated with minerals such as chlorite or serpentine, common in environments where gold is deposited. It's not magic, it's applied geology. Most people ignore these colors because they have never been taught to connect them to something valuable. They pass by quickly, with a distracted gaze, without imagining that that ordinary ground has already guided historical discoveries. And that's where the plot twist lies. Gold doesn't hide from nature, it hides from human inattention. There is also a third group of rocks that deserves immediate attention. The darkest, densest ones, almost too heavy for their size. They can indicate the presence of sulfide minerals or ancient volcanic rocks, environments frequently associated with gold deposits. When these stones appear alongside reddish or greenish tones, the sign becomes even more interesting. Experienced prospectors often say that the interpretation is never based on a single clue, but on the interaction between several signs at the same time. It's like assembling a puzzle where each color is a piece, and when the pieces begin to fit together, something awakens inside. A mixture of curiosity, respect, and that feeling of accessing knowledge that few possess. It's not about randomly digging, but about learning to interpret before acting. The most thought-provoking aspect of all this is realizing that this information has always been available, scattered throughout the landscape, waiting for someone willing to slow down and observe. What for many is just an unremarkable stone, for those who know how to read it, can be a clear message from the subsoil. And when that realization hits, the relationship with the environment changes completely. Therefore, if this type of knowledge is already expanding your way of seeing the ground, leave a like now and comment below what has caught your attention the most so far. Have you ever seen any of these colors without knowing what they meant? Share in the comments. Because this exchange of observations transforms curiosity into collective learning, and the next step makes all of this even more practical and applicable. In practice, it all starts with where these stones usually appear, and that already eliminates a good part of the noise. Rivers, stream banks, eroded slopes, road cuts, and areas where the soil has been naturally exposed are veritable open-air classrooms. Water and time do the hard work, revealing what was hidden beneath the surface. An attentive observer knows that loose stones in riverbeds are not there by chance. They were transported, selected and polished by the current. It is in these environments that colors become more evident, especially when they contrast with the surroundings. If an entire area is light and suddenly reddish, greenish or very dark stones appear, it's worth pausing not to create unrealistic expectations, but to observe methodically. The secret is not in chasing after everything, but in recognizing patterns and repetitions. Another essential point is learning to differentiate between the surface color and the structural color of the rock. Many stones seem interesting at first glance, but reveal a different story when wet or broken naturally. A simple trick used by experienced prospectors is to pour some water on the stone and observe it in natural light. The true color intensifies, the minerals become more visible, and hidden textures emerge. A rock that retains its reddish hue even when wet, for example, may indicate deep oxidation, not just surface dirt. A greenish stone that reveals light or dark veins may be associated with more complex geological processes. This difference changes everything, it's like comparing peeling paint to a wall whose color is part of its own structure. Those who learn to distinguish this begin to filter what deserves attention from what can be discarded. The association between stone color and gold mineralization doesn't happen in a vacuum. It depends on context. A single isolated stone rarely tells the whole story. Ideally, one should observe the whole. Type of terrain, relief, proximity to watercourses, and repetition of colors throughout the area. If several stones with similar tones appear concentrated in the same spot, the signal gains strength. 
This is exactly how geologists and prospectors begin their field analyses. No expensive equipment at the start, just a trained eye, constant comparison, and mental notes. A practical exercise is to walk a short distance, observe the ground for a few minutes, and then ask yourself, what colors are repeated here? What deviates from the pattern? This simple habit transforms curiosity into method. Perhaps the most valuable thing of all is understanding that these signs are not exclusive to experts, although they are widely used by them. The difference is that this knowledge is rarely explained directly to beginners. When someone learns to apply these observations in the real world, they stop depending on luck and start trusting in reading the environment. It's not about quick fixes, but about building a sharp, patient and strategic eye. Gradually, the terrain ceases to be a pile of random stones and becomes a living map full of clues waiting to be interpreted. And when this type of reading begins to make sense, curiosity naturally arises to know where this has actually happened, especially in places much closer than most people imagine. Real life stories help to take all of this out of the realm of theory and put our feet on the ground, literally. In various regions of the Western United States, many gold discoveries began almost unassumingly, with someone noticing stones that stood out from the surrounding landscape. Reddish slopes, altered soils, and dark rocks caught the attention of attentive observers long before any serious excavation. In California, Nevada, and Colorado, numerous gold deposits were initially associated with this type of simple visual reading. There was no advanced equipment at the beginning, just pattern repetition and well-directed curiosity. In some cases, it all started after a heavy rain revealed new colors in the exposed soil. These stories show that gold rarely presents itself in an obvious way, but almost always leaves visual traces for those who know how to observe. The same pattern repeats itself in other English-speaking countries, such as Canada and Australia, where modern prospecting still values surface reading. In Australian regions known for gold, for example, the presence of reddish rocks rich in iron oxides has always been considered an important initial sign. In Canada, areas with dark rocks and greenish alterations also caught the attention of prospectors even before more in-depth studies. Many of these discoveries began not with large-scale drilling, but with someone who knew how to interpret what was visible on the ground. This reinforces a powerful idea Great finds don't always begin with technology, but with perception. And when that perception develops, the gaze transforms, preparing the ground for an even deeper reflection on how this type of observation impacts not only the search for gold, but the way we see life itself. At some point, those who follow this type of knowledge begin to wonder how many times they've walked down an ordinary trail a seemingly worthless river or a forgotten ravine, thinking there was nothing special there. This question isn't about gold, it's about perception. Gold, like many opportunities in life, doesn't shout or announce itself with spotlights. It hides in subtle signs, waiting for someone willing to slow down and observe. Learning to read the colors of stones is, in essence, a training to see patterns where before there was only routine. Little by little, the person realizes that the world hasn't changed. What has changed is their perspective. The ground beneath their feet ceases to be scenery and becomes a message. This change in perspective spreads to other areas. More conscious decisions, less haste, more attention to details that most ignore. It's as if the mind is recalibrated to see value where before there was only distraction. And when that happens, it becomes impossible not to realize that this newly acquired skill is preparing something bigger, a new way of interpreting signs, not only on Earth, but in one's own personal journey. If everything shown so far has already begun to change the way you see the ground, now is the time to take the next step. Comment below, I'm watching the ground. Because adopting this attentive gaze is what separates those who merely pass through a place from those who truly understand it. Enjoy the video and subscribe to the channel to continue developing this reading skill that few master. And now, look carefully at the screen. 
The next video that is appearing now further deepens this skill, showing a plant that only grows where there is gold, and that many people have already seen without realizing it. If you want to learn to identify even clearer, more vivid and impossible to ignore signs, click on this video now, because it perfectly connects what you have just learned with an even more powerful indicator from nature. See you later, gemstone hunter.